Today in this video, I'll be talking about my painting called Nexus and going over and explaining the meaning, the reason, and design for each section of this painting and what inspired me to create this image. The theme of this painting is to highlight, showcase, or bring awareness to biological cellular function and its intimate connection to the external environments and how energy and information different inputs or signals keeps the cell finely tuned and highly optimal. This relates to human health as well as how energy and time are linked through biophysics physics, and physiological mechanisms. This painting was entirely inspired by Dr. Jack Cruz who is a neurosurgeon and I stumbled upon his website where I was attracted to it because I was dealing with a chronic health issue and I never heard a physician describe or explain how the external environment and the thermodynamic variables can influence our cellular health in such a big way. I started to read and learn as much as I could with the information that he provided and I put my own body to the test to see if there was some truth behind improving well-being. It turns out that I started to improve and feel better in many aspects including increased energy, mood, and sleep. So I knew that there was some sort of truth to it. It provided some sort of proof of concept or proof that it worked because of the biological response that I was getting. By feeling so much change and improvement it compelled me to create this painting. And I know that if it can improve me, it can improve many other people. And without Dr. Cruz's information, this painting wouldn't exist. And with that, let's get into it. What you see here in this red bending twisting barrier is actually a phospholipid bilayer membrane which is the outer membrane of a eukaryotic cell and we are made of eukaryotic cells and I have it morphing up into a circle but it's not just a circle it looks if you look really closely at the top middle it appears to look like a snake but this snake symbol where it's eating its own tail is known as the Ouroboros and it's been used for thousands of years symbolically for life eating life cycles and rebirth and I thought it was a perfect combo to fuse these images together because I've never seen anybody combine a eukaryotic phospholipid bilayer into an Ouroboros but it's perfect because the cell goes through cycles and it also goes through things like autophagy where it eats itself to maintain its health. The colors are significant such as purple and red and I wanted to put those in there because of the significance of red light and purple light in cellular function. Everything above the red phospholipid bilayer you can see two different environments. On the left is a cold dark environment and on the right is a bright sunny warmer lighter environment. There are two different environments under one sky and I wanted to point out the thermodynamic inputs of the cell and how we can utilize cold and light to maintain proper functioning of, of the cell. I wanted this art image to have a two-dimensional map feel such as the ones that humans created with north, east, south, west. So for this painting I have the sunrise on the right side of the image because the sun rises east every morning. I wanted the sky to appear as if it was transitioning from day to night. The biggest zeitgeber that the cell pays attention to is the light input, especially light and dark and the circadian mechanism that it formed over its evolution. So the big theme here is how light and dark have sculpted the circadian mechanism and why it's so crucial for our health 
vitality and function. Here on the right side of the painting, I intentionally placed many symbols that have a lot of meaning. First is the sun, but this in particular is a sunrise. Our cells tune in and pay attention to the energy and information from the sun to help set its clock system. So a huge part of our circadian mechanism or circadian rhythm is based on the light that we're in. Complex life simply does not exist without the sun. To the left of the sun there is a symbol of a sphinx. I placed this sphinx in the background because it symbolizes how it aims east or looks east every morning and each morning the sun rises in the east so this helps set this is a reminder to help set our central clock system to receive the light input for our circadian rhythm beneath the sphinx and to the right there are a pair of footprints in the sand this is symbolic for grounding to the earth. Grounding to the earth is immensely important for the charge of our cells. There have been many published studies on the benefits of grounding and has been well established in the scientific literature. To the left of the grounding footprints, there are a pair of oysters. I placed the oysters there because they are nutrient dense and, and they have a very special lipid or fat that's highly important for us to set our circadian mechanism. That fat is called DHA or docosahexaenoic acid. Science has revealed that DHA can transduce light and turn it into a DC electric current which our cells run off of. And I could have placed any type of seafood there, such as shrimps, octopus, clams, any, any type of seafood life. And behind the oysters, there is the ocean. And as the fossil record and evolution suggests, DHA was initially formed in the depths of the ocean. In the top left of this frame there is a bird but in particular it's a black swan and a black swan is symbolically uh, to represent how rare something is. Another term named the black swan event is something people have coined to describe how something can happen out of nowhere that previously didn't exist and a black swan is an example of that where nature can spontaneously form something that previously didn't exist. The black swan meaning can be extended to the DHA molecule because life was simple and before it complexified DHA had to be in the recipe order for it to do so. So in a way DHA was a black swan event because it never existed until nature figured out a way to innovate that. If you look closely I have a white beam of light coming out of the sun and it's bending with a Fibonacci sequence pattern that slows down and it's being compressed when it pierces through the red cellular membrane. I'm showing that the wavelength is forming as it slows down and as it goes through the membrane it enters into a prism that Mother Nature is holding in her left hand. As the beam of light passes through the prism it turns into a rainbow colored DNA double helix. And that is basically it for this side of the painting. Here is the top middle part of the painting where you can see an up-close view of the Ouroboros where the snake mouth is eating its tail. The body of the butterfly has the shape of an hourglass. The hourglass represents time. This is not a new or novel 
created fusion of images, but I thought it was perfect and appropriate for the message and theme that I was trying to convey in this painting. The butterfly represents three main meanings. One is change, two is metamorphosis, and three is the butterfly effect. But it can also represent how time flies or when time elapses things change. The butterfly effect was coined by a mathematician who observed and modeled nature and reality to simply describe how a small stimulus can lead to a seismic change. But it was in the context of the interconnectedness of nature. For example, he explained that a small flap of a butterfly wing could domino and cascade in parts of nature to cause a hurricane or a tornado to form somewhere else on the planet. If you alter your perspective and look at the edges of the butterfly wings both left and right, you can see that it's actually the outline profile of my face. The left wing is looking at the hourglass and the right wing is faced towards the hourglass as well. There is another small black swan positioned exactly where my eye would be looking and it's also pointed at the hourglass but its wings are flapping upwardly just like the upward angle of eyelashes. I place the bird on this side of the painting with the light side and the sunrise because we are awake during this time of the day and since eyelashes are angled up and also the bird's wings are angled up. I thought that was an appropriate symbolic meaning for being awake. I wanted this to also mean how I learned so many things and compiled it together to create a bird's eye view and so the bird and the eye are in the same place to represent that. On the dark left side of the painting there are many stars and I placed a star where my eye would be near the left wing and so that represents starry eyed to balance the opposite eye. On the left side where the dark side of the sky is transitioning from the light there is a cloud that looks like a black swan. I wanted this to represent chirality because if you split the painting down in the middle there is a left and a right black swan. But the left cloud image is not the exact same as the right black swan. The cloud is just a mirror image of the original. Just like when you raise your left hand to a mirror, the opposite hand appears in the mirror and that is a right hand. But since it's just a mirror image, it is not the original. And I wanted that to have some sort of meaning in this painting, where there is only one original and there's just a mirror image. Here is the left side of the painting that represents the cold and the dark. The dark is just as important as the light for cellular signaling and function. I wanted to show a cold environment because cold is a very important stimulus for the cell thermodynamically. We can use cold to generate heat and improve our metabolism and clock system simultaneously. The benefits of cold go way beyond that but I just wanted to include this in my painting the snowy mountain range is meant to show latitude and altitude. Behind the mountain range is an aurora borealis, also known as the northern lights. I wanted to show the northern lights because they are a phenomenon that is generated by the sun as well. To the right of the aurora borealis is a full moon, and the full moon has different effects on our physiology as well. And when it is full, the sun reflects even brighter and can affect our clock system. In the upper left corner of the painting, 
in the darkest spot, I painted the Galaxy Rift. It is mainly there to show the depth and scale of space. And that is basically it for this side of the painting. Here is the bottom half of the painting where I show the intracellular environment with all the cellular organelles. I have painted each cellular organelle a different color just like it appears in different biology textbooks. These tree branch like structures are meant to represent veins. I shaped these veins into a Fibonacci spiral because the Fibonacci ratio is ubiquitous and everywhere in nature. On this side of the painting you can see peroxisomes, lysosomes, centrioles, mitochondria, Golgi apparatus and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The mitochondria have glowing auras around them near their Minos layer and since they are tiny nano electromagnets they release light and I thought the only way to show that they do that was to create a white glow around them. I positioned some of the organelles in different shapes and sizes to also show the viewer how it's foreshortened towards them to make it look bigger in appearance with a, a distal effect. The green smooth endoplasmic reticulum kind of looks like gates around the water river with the veins that are that act like river banks. Moving to the right bottom side of the image you can see the rough endoplasmic reticulum along with all of the other organelles on the left side. Here you can see a better example of mother nature holding the prism as the light beam gets turned into a double helix DNA strand with the rainbow colors. Just like the Pink Floyd album cover with white light splitting into the rainbow colors, I thought that I could incorporate this into my painting, but I've never seen it turn into a rainbow DNA. I just thought it would be cool to fuse those images and concepts together. Here in the middle of the painting there's a lot to unpack about the meaning and symbolism with the human form Mother Nature. As you can see there's a waterfall emerging from Mother Nature's heart. I wanted this to mean two different things. I wanted this to say let things flow from your heart and the other one is for the Lennard effect. The Lennard effect is a measurable and detectable phenomena when water crashes into itself such as a waterfall. Once it crashes into itself it can release negative ions. Since the cell runs on a negative charge there is a benefit that we can pick up by being in a negative ion environment or space. So in a way being in a waterfall is technically a fountain of youth because it helps remain the negative charge in us. Wrapped around mother nature's arms and along her body are vines but they actually transition into veins as it goes around the body of water. I thought it would be a cool idea to turn vines into veins since they are both fractal parts of nature. As the water pools at the base of the waterfall, there is a river that flows towards the viewer and expands into a, a wider area. Blood is mostly water and I thought the connection between veins and water was appropriate in this image. This river could also be considered a canal. This river or canal is symbolically positioned at the pelvic area of the feminine. This can be interpreted as a birth canal and, and, and when women give birth water breaks or flows. The circular symmetrical and mathematical symbol behind mother nature is also a torus vortex. All of the rings connect 
to Mother Nature's third eye. Near the inner membrane on the Ouroboros, there are many lavender dots, and these dots represent what is called an exclusion zone. Water is responsible for the exclusion zone. Protons and electrons physically distance themselves or separate when light hits water. Cell water is where the magic happens, and since we are mostly water, that's why I thought it was appropriate to put that there. It turned out to be a pretty cool fusion of different images together to create a cellular membrane Ouroboros with the torus vortex inside of it as well as an exclusion zone of water. Here is a close-up of the human form Mother Nature. I painted her hair into vines with different blooming parts to it such as flowers, fruits, and roses. I was inspired and got the idea from other works of art and other artists who depicted Gaia in a similar fashion, but I thought this was appropriate for this painting as well. Her third eye and the symbolism of the third eye has been around for thousands of years and it could be seen as something similar to awareness, wakefulness, attention, and even enlightenment. But it occurred to me as I was painting this that my imagination or my mind's eye saw something come to fruition itself. It was a fun and cool synchronicity as I finished this painting. Her face is calm with no stress and she is in a meditative state of mind. This is an example of open focus attention. Her right arm is raised because I thought that it could mean something like how she was sensing the different environments in an intuitive way. And that is it for Mother Nature. I hope you enjoyed the explanation of my painting Nexus, and thank you for watching.